Hi, welcome back to Mr. Stewart's lessons. Today we're going to uh, learn how to uh, add to our score when we grab a pizza. Um, and it's going to involve getting into some a uh, little bit more advanced Java concepts. And I'm not afraid to do that. I just want to, I would, worth mentioning here, I'm more interested in teaching programming than teaching game design. There's probably people that could teach game design a lot better than I can, but I'm interested in teaching Java programming. And so that's really what we're learning about here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a score variable and we're going to put it in the world. Um, so we haven't really looked at the world class that much except to see like what objects it has in here. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to make a variable for the score. And I'm going to introduce you to a new concept. Uh, so uh, you probably, if you remember before, a score is going to be a, a number. It's, we're going to call it, it's a, the sim most common number variable is integer, so I can call it int score equals zero. This is a property of the world. The score is a property of the world. I'm going to add a new word here. I'm going to say private int score equals zero. What does that mean? What that means is that no other class can see it directly. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is because this is very good Java practice. We don't want other classes to be able to see our uh, a property of our variable directly. But right now, let's um, let's actually show the score on our screen. So, what I'm going to need to do uh, the score obviously is going to change, right? We we you're just showing it at the beginning of the of the, of the game isn't really going to do us any good. We're going to have to change it. So what we're going to have to do is is we're going to have to ch do something different every every time. Um, and we're going to so what that means is the world is going to have to have an act method just like our uh, actors do. And we can do that. We can add an act method to our world just like the actors have. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to say public void act okay this is our act method for the world and um, it, so this is the first method we've made this is a pre sort of a pre-made method the the um, the greenfoot knows that when I put the act method in there it's automatically going to um, it'll automatically do what it's supposed to do with the work with the with the act method which is to um, uh, do that every turn just like a, a forever loop um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna there's a nice uh, little um, method that the world has which is called the show text um, so we have this the show text uh, actually shows some text at a given position so we're gonna have put in some text and then the X and Y coordinate I haven't talked too much about the X and Y coordinates I should probably mention that recent uh, really quickly um, X and Y uh, so the X and Y coordinates, right? Um, you may know this from other games. If you worked in Scratch, the X and Y is zero, zero is in the center, and increasing the Y goes up and decreasing the Y goes down, increasing the X goes up and decreasing the X goes down. Um, Java, uh, Greenfoot doesn't work that way, nor do most other actual uh, uh, screen, uh, gaming, pro I mean, um, Canvas programs, right? Zero, zero is up here. Uh, increasing X moves to the right and increasing Y moves down. That may seem weird to you and you may wonder why did they do it that way. And the reason is because we always we always know where the upper left hand corner of the screen is going to be or we always know the upper left hand corner of the screen is going to be start. We don't know how big the window is necessarily going to be. And so um, putting it at zero zero means that uh, if I change the size of the window then the location of the center changes as well. So we're going to put it uh, up here. So let's say this would be uh, and, and uh, the, the text is, is sort of centered on its location so and it's kind of big so we're gonna say uh, X this would be X about a hundred right here where it's going to be centered and maybe 20 and then down 20 on the Y so this is the location we're gonna put it about so um, first we're gonna put in we'll say score I'll capitalize it score equals now we're going to uh, and then I'm going to say plus score. So let me just explain what that is really quick. Um, this is a, a string. I haven't talked about strings yet. Strings are uh, letters and words uh, like this, right? Score is an integer variable, and so that's kind of weird, right? I'm adding an integer onto a string. What happens? Well, with Java, what that does is it turns the it Java automatically turns the integer 
into a string. If I add an, uh, any number onto a string, it will turn that number into a string and then just uh, concatenate it is what we're calling it. Uh, concatenate it means stick it onto the end. So uh, this is going to, and then, so the X is going to be 100 and the Y is going to be 20. So let's just take a look at that. Uh, typo, I forgot my semicolon. And let's run it. There's our score is zero. Doesn't do much good yet. It's not going to change. So we're going to need we're going to need a method that's going to change the score. Um, so I'm going to make another method. This is uh, this is a, so we're going to make a method that's going to be called by something else. And this is a new thing. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do public. You might be wondering void. What what the heck is void, right? Well, so in Java. Uh, every method return can return something. It, not every method. Many methods return something. They might return a number, and when we say return, it means it's giving you something back, right? If you uh, adding two numbers, it'll return the sum of those two numbers, for example, right? Uh, then the return might be an integer. Um, this is not returning anything. This is the increase score method, and since it's just increasing the score, it's not going to return anything. It's just going to increase the score. And what about those parentheses there that we keep seeing? What are the parentheses for? The parentheses are for arguments. Um, we're not using any arguments yet, but often when you run a method, you're going to pass it some information uh, to start with. And uh, the, the parentheses is w w the, the information that it would be looking for in there. But again, there's not going to be any um, anything passed. So this is... Right, so and this is going to be fairly simple. We'll say score equals score plus one. Um, there's some shortcuts to how to increase a thing, but I'm not going to not going to um, add a new concept here right now. So here's our. So that's not. But so now, what we what do we have to do? Well, now when I hit a pizza, I've got to increase the score in the world and still make the pizza go away. Uh, remove touching this here is just not going to do the job because remove touching is is not uh, it, it's it's not going to the remove touching just does its thing but it's not going to give us any information to, to tell us that we can do anything else we need an if statement we need to know if we're touching a pizza so how do we do that well so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to make a, so I'm going to put in a line I'll sort of explain it as I go along I'm going to say actor pizza equals get one and then I'm going to do uh, the get one intersecting object um, so, <clears throat> so what is get one intersecting object well intersecting uh, is is a collision that means that my car is in the same place as the pizza so when it says get what is get me and that's where it gets really tricky does get just make it go away no it doesn't that is not what happens so but let well so I'm gonna get one intersecting object of pizza dot class right um, and so you might be thinking okay so it's gonna get the pizza make it go away no that's not at all what it's gonna do it's going to do something much more interesting look at the first part here I have actor pizza what is that I've created a variable here called pizza and the variable is of type actor, right? You remember, as I told you before, when I make the speed variable, I had to give it a type, a type int. This is the data type. This is what we call a primitive type. Primitive type is usually just a number. Um, actor, this is a data type, but the data type is of a class of thing, right? So we're saying there is a class of thing, right, called actor, right? And it's we're, that we're going to get the interse in, intersecting object and we're going to put whatever particular object we pick up, whatever particular pizza object we pick up, we're going to put it in that variable. So when I get that variable, it's it's going to uh, it's going to see that and put that in there, right? And just to show you, um, I can make it a little bit more interesting. I'll make it a class. And then we can inspect it. We don't need to do it this way, but I uh, just to show you what's happening, right, when I get this pizza, right? So if I look, if I inspect the object now, pizza no what's no mean there's nothing there there is it doesn't have a pizza yet there it doesn't know about any pizza right so this is no it's it's not there right so let's go touch the pizza and see what happens and so I'll inspect the car again 
Uh, and actor pizza, what is that? Oh, it's a pizza. It's a, it's a particular pizza object, right? That's what it is. And it's the pizza object at 42270. So now I actually have a pizza object, right? And uh, so, and this, so this is, right? But, but it doesn't make it go away. So how do I make it go away? Well, the way to make it go away is to get the world and tell the world to do it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say world. So we're gonna get an object of class we're going to make a variable for an object of class world equals, and um, I'm going to get rid of this actor pizza up here. I'm going to make this, we don't need this to be a property. Um, I'm going to leave this just as actor pizza down here. Uh, to explain the difference, right, when I make actor pizza inside the act property, it's, it's only going to exist at the moment I in the moment I use it. The next time the act property runs, it's going to all just go away. Um, this would be more if I needed to keep the pizza to do something. If I put it up here, then it would permanently be in that until I replaced it with something else. But we don't need to do that. We're, so we're saying, so this is, we've created a object of the uh, pizza class, which um, is going to be null if there's nothing, if there's, if I don't touch a pizza, but it's going to become that particular pizza if I'm touching a pizza. So now I say world get world equals, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, world my world equals, What's that do? Well, gets the world. It basically says get world is a method uh, in here that um, basically is is says get the world I'm in. And remember, what does get mean? Get means make it an object in 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 this particular in this particular object. So we're this is a, 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 a it's a sort of a hard concept, right? We're saying we're getting the world, right, and then we're putting it into an object that's in that's in this particular car. Okay, so great, now we have the world. So um, what can we do with the world? Well, now that we have the world, we can actually, it's, it, we, we, it's like we have its secret name. We can now control it. We can make the world do stuff, right? So what I wanna do is, I, is if, if I am touching a pizza, I wanna tell the world to remove it. So I'm gonna say if pizza not equal null. This is called a null check. It's something you're going to do a lot. You might have noticed before when I wasn't touching the pizza, the pizza was of type not was contained null. Null means there's no information in it. And just to explain really quick, right, when I say actor pizza, I'm not making a pizza object yet. I'm just sort of putting a pizza size box that I can put a slice of pizza in. You know those little triangular boxes they give you at 7-Eleven in some places that's shaped exactly like a piece of pizza? That's kind of what I'm doing, right? But if that, but if until I actually get a pizza, until I'm actually touching a pizza, right, um, that box is going to be empty, right? And so when it says get one intersecting object, it's going to return either an actor, an, an object of type actor, right? In which case it's going to put it in there, or it's going to return nothing. It's going to be null. And so it's going to put uh, a nothing in the pizza box, right? So uh, it, when I say if pizza not equals null, what I'm doing is saying basically if the box isn't empty, if this variable actually has a piece of pizza in it, which means I'm touching a piece of pizza, then I'm going to do my world dot remove and then I'll do remove object. Um, so this is just removes a thing and it notice it wants to remove an object of type actor, right? It wants to know. And so we're passing an argument here, right? We, we've passed arguments before, right? Uh, so in this case, the argument for set rotation was 90. The argument for move is five, which is the speed, right? In this case, we're actually passing the argument is actually going to be a, uh, a, a this particular variable, this particular pizza variable, right? And I want to check, you know, um, I actually want to check to see if that pizza variable is not null. We don't want to tell it to remove nothing, right? We only want to remove it if it's there. Uh, this null check is something we do a lot. Um, if you try and do something, I, I actually think uh, Greenfoot would let you get away with this because it's sort of a beginner, a beginner um, environment. But if you try and do something with an object, uh, an object that doesn't have anything in it, you will get a null pointer exception, and uh, that's something you will encounter. That's one of the first exceptions you're probably going to run into sooner or later, uh, and and it's going to complain. It's going to say you told me to do something with this thing, but it doesn't exist. So. Let's run it here, right? So we can run this and great. But you're saying, great, Jim, we just put in all that extra code to do the exact same thing that we could do 
uh, just once with this touching thing. But there's something we haven't done here, which is we want to actually increase the score um, if we're, the pizza is not null. And we made a method to increase the score. It's over here in my world. And uh, I forgot to tell you what this word public means. The public means it can be called by another actor. We want the car to be able to call it because only the car knows when it's touching a pizza. And um, so what we're going to do, what we need to do is we need the car to be able to tell the world to do this uh, to do this thing, and you may have said, "Hey, Jim, you said just you just said that if I have my world secret name, then I can make it do things. So why don't we just say my world dot increase score, and let's try and compile that and see what happens. And it's not going to work. It doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is when I get the world right, and this, we'll look at this. I'll just retype this uh, if I do get world." What does it do? It returns uh, returns. Uh, um, it's going to return a world, return to the world, an object of type world. See this world get world, it returns a world. And the problem is we don't want a world, we want a my world, right? Uh, my world doesn't have the increase score in it, only my world has it. So how do we do that? You might think, okay, so we'll just say my world. Okay, that's we're going to make it an object of type my world. That should work, right? And so we're going to try and do that, and it's still not going to going to be happy. And this is going to be really frustrating to you. You're going to be like, well, what now? What's the problem? I said make it a my world, and it's saying, what does it say? Incompatible types. Green foot dot world cannot be converted to my world. Even though we're getting an object of type world, the method itself is telling you that it's returning a world, and so it's saying, hey, that's not right. But I'm absolutely sure in this case that the object I'm getting is of type my world. So I can do something called typing, which is say, take this thing and put it into this more specific type. And I can only get away with this if I know for sure that that's the type of the object I'm going to be getting. I know I'm going to be getting a my world because that's the only world there is. So I'm going to put in parentheses my world. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, get the world, then turn it into a my world. That is, to, and, and that's only going to work if the thing I got really is a my world. So you're going to say, say that, put it into an object of type my world, and then now this is going to work. And so you can say, my world, my world equals get world. And now my increase score method, if I can see it, if I do dot and hit control space, uh, you'll see the increase score method is in there. And now it will increase the score. Let's try it out. Uh, yay, I got a one, two, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to win this game. Oh my gosh, yay, I got all the pizzas I won. Uh, next week, let's make this game a little bit more challenging by putting in some obstacles or bombs that are going to make this a little bit harder. I'll see you then.